Item number SCP-231-7. See addendum regarding SCP-231-1 through SCP-231-6. Object class, Keter. Site and personnel requirements. Under special order of O5, the following addendum is attached to the beginning of the file for SCP-231-7. All personnel assigned to SCP-231-7 must rotate out for one month of psychological counseling after two months on site. SCP-231-7 is to be kept at an undisclosed location. All personnel assigned to SCP-231 will be transported there blindfolded from Site-19 by a route including no fewer than seven different forms of transportation, including but not limited to aircraft, automobile, underground tunnel, and... Removal of the blindfold during the transport process is grounds for immediate termination. Personnel assigned to SCP-231-7 must undergo heavy psychological testing before being cleared to enter the site. Individuals must score at least 72 points on the Milgram Obedience Examination, be unmarried, have no offspring, and express nothing less than total loyalty to the Foundation. Normal psychological screening procedures against Axis II disorders are waived, so long as the Class D personnel in question has the mental capacity to carry out Procedure 110 Montauk as needed. Personnel who express sympathy towards SCP-231-7's plight and or express a desire to rescue or sympathize toward SCP-231-7 will be transferred to another project without delay. Any actual rescue attempts will be met with immediate termination. Personnel who have served on the staff of SCP-231-7's containment team are not required to divulge that information to others. No official record shall be kept of the names of any staff assigned to SCP-231-7, nor will said service appear in the personnel files of said staff. While on site, individuals assigned to SCP-231-7 will be issued concealing helmets with integrated voice changers to protect their identity. On-site staff are not to remove said uniforms in the presence of other staff members. Off-duty hours are to be spent in private quarters alone. Six Class D personnel are to be assigned to SCP-231-7 each month for the purposes of carrying out Procedure 110 Montauk. Violent criminals are not to be used for this purpose due to the possibility of accidental fatality during the 110 Montauk process. Special Containment Procedures Following repeated escape and suicide attempts, and based on the failure of containment for SCP-231-1 through 6, containment of SCP-231-7 has been amended to the following. SCP-231 is to be contained within a soundproof holding cell adjacent to holding cells for 6 Class D personnel assigned for the purposes of Procedure 110 Montauk. Cameras will monitor every inch of the cell at all times, and must be manned 24 hours a day. Malfunctioning monitoring equipment will be replaced without delay by psychologically screened staff. Doors will be magnetically locked, openable only by positive action by the control and monitoring facility. This includes all doors linking the main holding cell to those of the six Class D personnel. SCP-231-7 is to be kept restrained to a hospital bed at all times except for the purposes of Procedure 110 Montauk. Hydration will be provided through IV drip. Feeding will be carried out twice per day through feeding tube by approved medical personnel who have not taken the Hippocratic Oath. Under no circumstances are narcotics, anesthesia, or other unapproved medications to be administered to SCP-231-7. Procedure 110 Montauk is to be carried out at least once every 24 hours by Class D personnel. During Procedure 110 Montauk, at least one security clearance 4 231 staff member must monitor the procedure by camera at all times, although the sound may be turned off if the vocalizations of SCP-231-7 become too distressing. Following the procedure, all Class D personnel must return to their holding cells or explosive collars will be detonated. Data expunged per order of 05 on Information moved to Eyes Only Document 231-110-Montauk. Access to 231-110-Montauk is limited to personnel with security clearance 4-231. Description. SCP-231-7 is a female between and years of age with SCP-231-1-7 through were retrieved from following a police raid on a warehouse owned by an organization called the Children of the Scarlet King. See article on in the 
newspaper, Police Raid Satanic Sex Cult Save 7. 24 hours after the rescue, SCP-231-1, real name, went into labor pains, giving birth three minutes later to SCP- causing a event resulting in over confirmed casualties. Foundation personnel immediately took possession of remaining SCPs 231 2 through 231 7, and based on notebooks recovered from the cult, instituted Procedure 110 Montauk to prevent future occurrences. Addendum 231 A Current status of SCP 231 units SCP 231 1 Deceased Killed during initial recovery operations while giving birth to SCP. See Casualty Report for Event 231 Alpha for more details. SCP 231 2 Deceased. Killed during attempt to remove fetus of second SCP specimen, resulting in immediate event. See Casualty Report for Event 231 Bravo for more details. SCP 231 3 Deceased. Self-terminated following a prolonged period of distress caused by implementation of Procedure 110 Montauk. SCP immediately underwent a event. See Casualty Report for Event 231 Charlie for more details. SCP 231 4 Deceased. Attempted to administer SCP 500. Although successful in that all traces of SCP were expelled from the system, expelled remains immediately underwent a event, causing numerous casualties, including SCP-231-4 herself. See Casualty Report for Event 231 Delta for more details. SCP-231-5 Deceased Botched application of Procedure 110 Montauk resulted in SCP 231 5 giving birth to SCP one hour later, which then underwent a event. See Casualty Report for Event 231 Echo and Report on Destruction of Site 231 Aleph for more details. Recruitment profile of Class D personnel was revised to minimize possibility of a second botched Procedure 110 Montauk. SCP 231 6 Deceased. Killed during escape attempt aided and abetted by Agent who had been exhibiting heightened stress levels due to prolonged exposure to SCP-231, obtained possession of SCP and attempted to use said weapon to rescue SCP-231-6 and SCP-231-7. Agent was killed in the resulting firefight, but a stray round resulted in the termination of SCP-231-6 as well. Fetus of SCP-231-6's SCP then underwent a event. In the wake of this incident, O5 level personnel voted by unanimous decision to amend personnel policies. See Casualty Report for Event 231 Foxtrot for more details. SCP-231-7 As of SCP-231-7 is successfully contained at site Addendum 231-B Text of Missive by O5 Dear friends, It has come to my attention that recently, certain rumors have surfaced regarding SCP-231. Due to the drop in staff morale, I have decided to address some of the more prevalent points. Yes, Procedure 110 Montauk is as horrible as you have heard which is why only Class D personnel are authorized to carry it out. Yes, it does involve brutal... No, assignment to SCP-231 is not intended to test your loyalty to the Foundation, your tendencies toward... or anything else. No, SCP-231 is not a punishment detail. Yes, there are staff members who have been on SCP-231 and have successfully transferred out of it by their own request. No, not everyone who's worked on SCP-231 is terminated upon leaving the project. Yes, staff members who have been assigned to SCP-231 are allowed to take a Class A amnesic before leaving the project if so desired. 
Yes, false memories are then implanted. No, none of the supposed methods for recovering or detecting false memories work. Yes, there are some of you who have worked on SCP-231 and don't remember it. No, we have not given up on trying to save SCP-231-7. But research in that field must be carried out with the utmost of caution. Based on the increased potency of each subsequent event associated with each subsequent SCP specimen, there is a strong possibility that SCP-231-7 event could result in an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. This information is corroborated in notebooks recovered from the cultist. See document, Seven Brides, Seven Seals, SCP-231-Adjunct-B. No, putting the poor girl out of her misery is not an option. Neither is drugging her. She has to be aware of what is going on for 110 Montauk to work. One final note. The Foundation does many distasteful things in the completion of our mission, but our mission is important enough that the price is one we must pay. Containment of SCP-231 is one of our most dangerous duties, not because of any direct danger to ourselves, like SCP-682, but because of the danger that our resolve will fail, that we will allow ourselves to either let down our guard due to sympathy for the suffering of an innocent, or that we will allow ourselves to become monsters through the performance of monstrous acts. Just do your jobs and save the philosophizing for the shrink. Sincerely, O5... Don't believe it when they say they're trying to save her. Why would they bother? They've got exactly what they want, exactly where they want it. Addendum 231-C. Update. 231-7's emotional response to Procedure 110 Montauk appears to be reduced recently, despite proper execution of said procedure. Increasing danger of SCP undergoing a event. Two options have been proposed. One, develop a new containment procedure with higher emotional response than Procedure 110 Montauk. Two, administration of a Class A amnesic to SCP-231-7 allowing for a return to base emotional response state. Said memory modification is to be administered during execution procedure 110 Montauk to maintain a heightened emotional state following memory reset. Please advise, Dr. B Addendum 231-D. Decision. Carry out option 2 at the first available opportunity. 05 Addendum 231-E. Aftermath. Option 2 was carried out. SCP-231-7's emotional state returned to 100% efficacy. Dr. B subsequently committed suicide due to heightened emotional stress. Will continue analysis of efficacy of treatment. Dr. B Addendum 231-F. Continued analysis of efficacy of treatment. After some analysis, I have determined that it is not necessary to perform memory modification every time Procedure 110 Montauk is carried out. In fact, it is better to delay for some time before re-administering the agent. Analysis of Subject 231-7's emotional response indicates that efficacy of Procedure 110 Montauk seems to peak between the third and fourth performance of the procedure. The dread of anticipation of events seems to heighten emotional response for a time before familiarity with the procedure begins to lessen the efficacy of treatment. My recommendation is that Class A amnesiacs be administered once a week during Procedure 110 Montauk. The calendar has been modified accordingly. Dr. B